The Whistler. I'm the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadow. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It's the whistler's strange story, Whirlpool. He wasn't sure when it began. It was too much like walking in the middle of a nightmare and then remaining in it, living in it. The shipwreck, the confusion, was all there again, coming back to him, but slowly, hazily. And there was a strange buzzing in his ears, pressure, and the sound of the sea, a whirlpool of confusion. And then gradually, out of the whirlpool, voices dimly faintly at first, the voices growing, coming closer and closer. He coming around? Yes, he'll be all right, Captain. It's the shock, his exhaustion. Easy, son. Easy. We got his name, Doc. It's Hastings, Stephen Hastings. Oh, good. <laughs> Mr. Hastings, you're all right. It's over. We pulled you out. Pretty bad shape, isn't he? Worst of any we picked up. Do you hear anything about the others? The Khalifa just radioed. She took on most of them. Can I get off? Swim swim the lifeboat? Poor devil going through it all over again. He's better, though. He's coming around. Hastings. Mr. Hastings. Couldn't be any mistake about his identity, Captain. No, no. That's who he is. Oh, never mind now. Come on, boy. Drink this. That's... Did they get his clothes? <coughs> Identification? Well, he's Hastings, Doctor. There's no doubt about it. The girl. She's his wife. Oh. Could you get her to come in here, Captain? Why? Why, why? Oh! Now, you oh. just relax. You're suffering from shock, Mr. Huh? Hastings. Huh? From exhaustion and huh? severe shock. What? Would you what? come in, Mrs. Hastings? My husband is young. Just come in. Oh, no, huh? I haven't any. Darling. Huh? Oh, darling, I'm so afraid for you. I thought so terrible about it. Huh? Cruz being my idea. Huh? Hasn't been much of a pleasure, Trip, has it, dear? Huh? Doc? Yes, Mr. Hester. Uh, can you... Would you leave us alone a minute? Surely. I want to... want to be with... my wife. Why, certainly. Captain, we'll wait on up, Dick. Hey, now. You want to tell me what it's all about? Darling, you shouldn't try to talk. Ask I can talk to you. They fished me out. I'm okay. You see? Huh? I'm okay. Well, of course you are. And the name was South. Like this or in full dress suit. at South. Marty South. It's a nice name. I like it. That's fine. And you are? Mrs. Stephen Hastings of the Shanghai Hastings. You can call me Lucille. Yeah, okay, Lucille. What's on your mind? He's dead, huh? This Hastings guy. Yes, Stephen's dead. One that didn't make it. One that didn't make it. You... You left him in his cabin. He wouldn't budge. It was as if he'd welcomed it. Welcomed what? Chance to die? I don't know. You couldn't send anybody back after him? With all that was happening, I... I didn't think. But you've been thinking since. Yeah. Funny... Oh, come on, I'm waiting. My husband, Stephen, has some money coming to him. It's waiting for him now in Singapore. Waiting for Mr. Hastings to pick it up. Any Mr. Hastings will do, darling. Crazy. To begin with, how can you pass me off as your husband here on board? There are quite a few survivors, I've heard. Nobody knew him. He stayed in his cabin half the voyage. The others were picked up by the Khalifa. We'll see him in Singapore. No, the Khalifa's heading the other way to the United States. And we didn't know a soul in Singapore. Where does this money come from? From an old friend in Shanghai, E.J. Galloway, a former business partner of my husband. You see, 
E.J. made a mistake once. A business deal in Singapore. Mm. And I found out about it. I told Stephen what to ask for. He did. He got results. Shakedown, huh? Nice guy, your husband. He was, as a matter of fact. Weak, though. Terribly weak. You know, he almost got sick to his stomach sometimes. Just thinking about it. About blackmailing his old friend. Then why'd he go ahead with it? He liked me. Why? Oh, now you don't mean that. I, I can be quite appealing. Maybe. The guys like Stephen Hastings. But not the guys like Marty South? Get out of here. That's all. For now. That's all for any time. We'll see. If you get lonesome for me, darling. Stephen, just tell the doctor. That's all, Marty. And then she's gone. Leaving you to rest and think and think some more. For reasons you can't explain to yourself, you don't say anything about not being her husband, Stephen Hastings, do you? And then, half a day out of Singapore, you can't stand it anymore. You call the doctor. Send for her. Here, you're sitting up. How wonderful. Yeah. Don't you want to know what I've decided? I know. Yeah? You like money, Marty. You know, I think you like me. A little? Look, I know what I'm going into. It includes you only because you're a necessary part of the deal. I'm very necessary, darling. So is having a husband, Stephen. Okay, I'll keep him alive for a while. I knew you would. But get this straight, baby. Your husband made a big mistake when he fell in love with you. I'm not going to make that mistake. Darling, I think we'll get along fine together. Just fine. In just a minute, The Whistler will continue tonight's story. And now, back to The Whistler. You made a decision, didn't you, Marty? About Lucille and the money waiting for Stephen Hastings in Singapore. Perhaps it was the suddenness with which Lucille Hastings thrust opportunity into your hands by asking you to pose as her dead husband. But there's another thing you've decided on. You're not going to fall in love with Lucille. Because that doesn't fit in with your plan at all. The next night in Singapore, the two of you move easily around the dance floor of the Fort Plaza Hotel. Seemingly just a devoted married couple. Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Hastings. Mm, you dance well, then. Stephen's improved. Very much so. Maybe the poor guy was tired. He had a right to me. I think we should stop talking about that. Suits me. Let's talk about uh, when we go to work. Hmm? Let's see. I think we just wait a day or two. We can go to Wednesday for the first thing. Where do I go? I'll have to look at E.J.'s letter again. I think it's a little tailor shop on Pondrosa Street. Why wait till Wednesday? No reason. I just think it's best. All right. What do I do there? Oh, just have your coat pressed. You can wait for it if you want to. Tell them you're Mr. Hastings. What if they want proof? Then they can ho call the hotel and ask Mrs. Hastings. But they won't. Relax, darling. Sorry, not until I've had my coat pressed. Good morning, sir. I want to get this coat pressed. I'll wait. Uh, name's Hastings. Oh, yes. And you're staying... Port Plaza. Why? Oh, nothing, Mr. Hastings. Just curious. If you're going to call or anything, my wife isn't there. She stepped out. No, no, Mr. Hastings. Uh, the coat, please. I'll have it for you right away. Good. <laughs> Good 
You watch the proprietor of the little tailor shop as he takes your coat and moves off toward the back of the establishment. You look around nervously, ready to run for it if anything goes wrong. But nothing does, Marty. He's back in a matter of minutes, handing the newly pressed coat across the counter. You pay him and slip it on. Feel the bulge of a heavy envelope in the inside pocket. Half a block away, you open the envelope and look inside. It's there, Marty. $20,000 in crisp, unmarked bills. Half of it's yours. And then your pulse quickens and you glance back. There's someone following you, Marty. And you realize that Lucille is still thinking as fast as ever. That she's guessed you might not wait until Wednesday. You turn, hurry down the street on your way back to the hotel. Darling, you don't have to knock. My own husband. What will the neighbors think? Never mind, inside. What's all the excitement? You had me followed, didn't you? Did I? The fat guy in the white suit right out of the book. How quaint. Are you going to tell me what's going on? When you calm down, you might tell me. I went to the tailor shop like you said. Didn't they give you the money? That's not the beef, Lucille. I'm talking about the guy who picked me up on the way out. One of your pals, huh? High-powered insurance policy. You're not making sense, darling. If somebody followed you, it's because you're in Singapore. Stay out of alleys, darling. Rough neighborhoods. This is a big city. I wish I could buy that. You can buy anything, Mr. Hastings. How much did you get? 20000 Here, it's in the envelope. I thought we agreed on Wednesday. <laughs> All right. I'll forgive you this time. No, you won't. I'll try. Honestly. <laughs> what are you thinking? Something pretty foolish. That sometimes... You would really like to level. Marty. Darling. Put your arms around me. So I can hold on for the sleigh ride? I wouldn't take you on a sleigh ride. Not you. You'll take your mother on one. Don't hate me, Marty. Not now. Not this minute. Here I go, huh? My back's against the door anyway. Marty. Marty. Come in. You. Too bad it's not for keeps, Lucille. Let's not talk about for keeps. Let's think about now. Right now. Yeah, right now. Only admit it. Tomorrow it could be a knife in my back. All right, if that's what you want me to say. Right now. Kiss me, Marty. Kiss me. Your mind is spinning as you leave her, Marty. You're afraid, aren't you? Because the one thing you've tried to guard against is happening. Slowly and surely, you're falling in love with her. And you know what it can mean. And then one night, as you walk alone through the streets of Singapore, you catch sight of him again. The man she's had following you. You hurry forward, turn into an alley and stop. And wait. Here I am, huh? Mr. What do you want? No, take it easy, Mr. Hastings. I just, just wanted to talk it over. Talk what over? Why, our deal. I thought maybe you'd change your mind the way you've been acting. Avoiding me. Of course, this is sort of a crazy setup. Ah. Uh-huh. I thought you were going to meet me when you got in last week. Introduce yourself. Set it all up. After all, I've been getting things secondhand. I think you better keep talking, Mr. Gray's good enough, eh, Mr. Gray? It might be. Oh, I don't blame you for being careful, Mr. Hastings. Screwy deal like this. But how's this sound to you? You take your wife to the Red Angel Cafe tomorrow night. Just cash her like, see? You have dinner with her... The last one, then stroll out on the terrace. Terrace? Yeah. Nobody out there much. Just give me a chance to get lined up and then light her cigarette. The match will give me a target. An easy one. 
It hit you suddenly. Stephen Hastings, the weakling, the coward who loved Lucille so much that he'd blackmail a lifelong friend. He really didn't want to leave that cabin, did he? No, Marty. Because he'd set up a plan to kill her at the end of the voyage. A plan that he was too weak to go through with. It's perfect, isn't it? You can get rid of Lucille tomorrow night. And the following morning, drop around to the tailor shop. Pick up the rest of the money and leave town. But you're not sure, are you, Marty? Not sure that this is the way you want it to be. What's the matter, Mr. Hastings? You haven't changed your mind? Changed my mind? Uh, I'd like a little more time to think it over. I've been doing some traveling. I want my 5,000 bucks, Mr. Hastings. 5,000, okay, you'll get it. You want to leave it in your hotel box? Small, new bills, cash. Uh, Mr. Gray. Yeah? If the money's there, tomorrow night you'll see us, my wife and me, at the Red Angel Cafe. On the terrace? Yeah. I'm to uh, light her cigarette. <laughs> you know about this play? Red Angel? Mm-hmm. Heard somebody mention it. You like it? Very much. And I like you for bringing me. Lucille, I... Uh... Oh, you want to talk? Come on. Where are we going? On the terrace. But... Okay. The terrace. You can see the lights from the harbor. Beautiful. Yeah. Marty, you were going to tell me something inside. Yeah, I was. I think I know what it is. You know, Marty, you're not like Stephen at all. You're anything but weak. Except when it comes to putting this sort of thing into words. Um, give me a cigarette, darling. What? I said, give me a cigarette. Anything wrong with that? I know. There's nothing wrong. Here you are. Thank you, darling. You know, just the way you're looking now tells me something. You do love me, don't you? Yeah. I guess I do. Oh. Do you give me a light? Light? Mm-hmm. Okay. You're beautiful, Lucille. Something I'll never forget. Here. Thank you, darling. In the police station at Singapore, the arresting officers huddle around a man sitting under the glaring white light. Come on, Gray, we know you did it. No. You've been followed since you asked for that money in Hastings' hotel box. Mr. Hastings gave me the money, left it for me. What was it for, the killing? Gray, you were seen firing the gun. All right. I did it. But it was a plan. Hastings. He was tired of his wife? He must have been tired of everything. But he was a weakling. Suicide's been on his mind for months. Only he didn't have the nerve. Suicide? Then why kill her? I think maybe it was because of some deal she talked him into. He didn't want to leave her around so that she could follow through with it. That's why Stephen Hastings set this thing up. So they die together.
Featured in tonight's transcribed story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Whitfield Connor, Georgia Ellis, Marvin Miller, Lawrence Dobkin, and Herb Butterfield. The Whistler, directed by Gordon T. Hughes with music by Wilbur Hatch, is written and produced by Joel Malone. This is George Walsh speaking and reminding you to listen again next week for another strange tale by The Whistler. <laughs>